So we're here with uh, artist Zoe Lineker, and she's very generously agreed to bring a bunch of her stuff and her work and show us kind of around her process and her story. I was very intrigued by the story itself, having seen some of the mythological things that we end up with. We'll show you later over uh, here in the corner at the mothership. But this stuff is still collage, right? These are all photographs. Mm -hmm. piece together. You do these with a, an X-Acto knife or you do these Sometimes. with a scissor or? Both. Combo yeah. piece. I stick mostly to scissors in my later pieces, but these, especially for the tree cutouts, get really delicate and I couldn't get in there with a scissor. You were a UNC art person? At, I was, uh, but at this time I was in Scotland. UNC really had a, has a wonderful faculty, but it's a very small department and I'll not a lot of people that I knew in the department are still making art, as far as I know. You're taking this journey of the self, you're thinking it's okay to take and cut up your own photographers, because I remember there used to be a point where photographs were so sacred you would never cut up a photograph, you know, it would be like writing in a book, which until I got to college in a highlighter I always thought, you know, books are our friends, you're not allowed to write in a book. <laughs> so these are self-portraits as mm -hmm. well within these? Oh, I yeah. didn't realize that. Because they were from my experience of vision walks or dreams, however you want to see it, an alternate space. space I was traveling. Yeah, in. yeah. Your own permission to be in this space and to be of these spaces. And since there was no way I could show this world to anybody in a photograph. Right, because it's inside your head, right? That's Frequently the really artist's tricky. problem, right? Like I have the same thing where you're holding a story in your head and the only way to get it out is to write it. You exactly. know, the only way to get this out is to produce it. And that's what it felt like. It felt like it was bottled up and I didn't know how to express it. And this is, you know, collage became the natural outlet in some form because I didn't know how to use Photoshop. And also I didn't like how slick Photoshop looked when you put something like this right. together. Yeah, yeah, the... Uh... It would lose its kind of choppy, interesting. And even then you can see I'm starting to experience like experiment yeah. with a little bit of texture. Three, yeah, feel. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. That's photographs, it looks more like cloth almost. That's because I spent a lot of time and effort researching and printing on different papers. Right. So you can actually feel this paper. Right. Oh wow, yeah, it's so much thicker. This by the way, people, is a work in progress and we'll talk about later about the Kraken, but Wow, so different kinds of papers, but yet here we are with a photograph of something that ends up being the ocean, mm -hmm. right? And even that looks like some of the white is made by the paper kind of underneath the paper. Like It's the, from the tears. Right, the backing part comes. So if you want to take it and rip it this oh, way. Oh, see, just watching you tear a piece of paper that <laughs> has that on it makes me cringe. Right, but there's the white. But then you become the wave, the crest of the wave. Right. So if you right. wanted to create more separation from the background quickly, you can do that. And if obviously, if you want to minimize that, you tear from the other direction. Wow. It just feels so brave to tear, I know. I'm like, please don't tear. No, okay? it's freeing once yeah. you just give yourself permission to do it because yeah. you can rip it up, you can tear it, you can cut it up. And what I've decided to do is just trust myself and the fact that the pieces will fit together right. how they're meant to is just let it kind of organically grow out of itself. That's a very free flowing process. It had to take time, like to be holding these ideas in your head and then to trust yourself to put them together. Yeah, it does. The research helps. The, the pre preparation for making the piece takes so much longer than the piece itself. Yeah, we were talking about that. Zoe does a ton of research. So when we get beyond the shore, um, there's a whole series of things that are built along the mythological and like these smaller pieces that are reinterpretations of the journey of self, you reinterpret some of these myths. Yeah, because there's just so much material to work with. So you were telling us about uh, St. George and the dragon, for <laughs> example, that the dragon gets away in your world. Right, and the dragon is always gored, bloody to death. I mean, we used to think, of course, the dragon's the bad guy, so what, he gets killed. But, you know, in the modern parlance of what we're dealing with in our world, we just don't want to. Kill beasts if they were nothing, right? At least I don't. I'm yeah. sure some people would still say, dragon, sweet, let's put that head on my wall. That's like the end all be all yeah. prize, you know? Right, um, right. Put it next to the moose yeah. in the ear. Like, <laughs> I got a dragon. You know, put I, it right next to your alien. Exactly. But in your case, reimagining this myth, 
it becomes something very different in terms of there's a various stories if you go back I've done some research in libraries and there's writings based on I'm not I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this correctly but alien it's like a and E are the same uh, letters, yeah, oh, so that, right, yeah, yeah. and he talks about the possible love between a dragon and a human mm. and there's critics of this that I was reading in a different book who talks about you know let those who can have love in their heart for the beast do so I cannot because right. they are you know visions from the devil they are demons they are meant to be slain now, even some of the psalms go back about, you know, how we will gently lie down with the beast at some point, you know, there'll be no more fight with nature. And that, I guess, goes to the next one about the Minotaur in Crete, and you've reinterpreted that again, the Minotaur myth, instead of the Minotaur just being a, a savage beast who gets killed in a cave without any happiness. In your story, he uh, escapes to an island with a beautiful princess? Who is his sister, but yes. Well, you know, it's mythology. <laughs> you're still going to have a, yeah, I mean, <laughs> something. No, well, she's waiting for Bacchus, so. Right, so she's not his lover in this scenario. Bacchus is supposed to come to her, but you're literally using tape to tie those knots. It, it, so the, are there folds or just cuts? like? Folds and very, very small pieces of tapes and also wrapping it around itself. Can we pick that up and get closer to it? So there's all kinds of like, I so see I, like- There's probably a tiny piece, couple pieces of tape there. There's right underneath there, there's gonna be a piece of tape holding that down. But if I'm not crazy, I see like five layers here, right? Cause of there's course. a bone picture and a lady picture and the golden thread and the minotaur, but the minotaur himself is a couple layers. And then there's two or three layers of background behind that, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you're, yeah, I can't imagine that all coming together like that, like such intricate planning and with an overarching story of it all. And one of the things I find really interesting is that you're not always just taking pieces of ocean to turn them into ocean or pieces of flower to turn them into flower. You were telling us in this one over here where you're reinterpreting the story of the unicorn. The unicorn is made out of bone. Is that what you said this was? Or wood. wood. Pieces of wood have become one of my favorite things to work with in trees because once you start really looking at a piece of wood, you can find so many different shapes inside. Uh. Kind of, you know, you look at it long enough and you start thinking, oh my goodness, this looks like a horse, you know, coat of a horse. Because I actually went out and I photographed horses. And when I got back, I thought, it's weird that a horse doesn't look like a horse in a collage, right? Like, right. but when you put pieces of wood together like that, it looks like a horse. It looks very snout like up here, exactly. right? But if you get in close, you can see that's just... Oh, like a knot in the tree uh -huh. almost. Wow. But so that goes with this whole sense of reinterpretation. You're reinterpreting interpreting your own journey, your own walkabout. You're reinterpreting your photographs to use them in a different medium. Mm -hmm. And then the story changes. You said you were in the Duke Rare Books Library and the typical story of the unicorn is not the happy horse shit, for lack of a better word, that we, that we usually think of. It's not My Little Pony. No, sadly, uh, one of the main themes was the unicorn hunt rather than the unicorn frolicking in a field. So what would happen is the virgin would sit down and lure the unicorn to her, and then the hunters would come out and kill it. Ah. <laughs> so what happens in your reinterpretation? In my reinterpretation, I kind of pulled together the idea of the woman and the idea of the unicorn as one creature because... In my mind, they are both being used by the hunter. They're both right. being taken over by this. They're both a male sacrifice, dominated. kind yeah. of, for the male dominated paradigm. Exactly. So, in this, she's taking back the spear. And she's the one where, who's got blood on the spear. So, who knows yeah. what she did last right. night? Right, right. <laughs> to all those men folk who were hunting her. Interesting. So, you've got a, actually a new series coming on powerful women as well. I, I see the dancer on top of the airplane there, but I know you're doing another series generally on dancers you want to tell us a little bit about that absolutely i started photographing dancers for actually this piece uh, i had this image in my head of a ballet dancer on a plane in the ocean don't ask me why sometimes these things just it would yeah. just pop in your head and you can't get them out until you that's part of something. being an artist right you make because yeah. you need to make it it's in you so i had her come over i reached out for a ballet dancer we did the shoot and i just 
fell in love with it and in love with her form. This is actually the same dancer in a different pose. Oh, wow. And so the grace of her body played really well with the frame of the horse. Awesome. So you're now in a series of uh, dancer photographs? Yeah. I really love the challenge of capturing that grace and that motion. And it's just a lot of fun to work with dancers. Your collages convey a lot of motion, too. Well, I, I mean, I just feel really powerfully interested in the transformation of stories. I mean, that's why we're here. We had this conversation probably a year ago, the first time we yeah. said we ought to do a, an interview together yeah. with this transformative story. And I know people can only watch for so long, but tell them where they can find you if they want more on Instagram or if they want to see more on the internet. Where's the best place for the people to go and find you? Uh, my website would be zoelitakerphotography.com. Spell your last name for them. Lydaker, L-I-T-A-K-E-R, and my first name is Zoe, Z-O-E, right. no Y or anything fancy. All right, forget that. And, and the Instagram? Instagram is Zoe Lydaker Photography, but that's going to be mainly dancers and the projects I'm working on in my photography life. If you want to see more collage work, I have titled my up-and-coming business Chimera Collage based on the mythological creature that's built of many different parts. Right, right. That yeah. thing I would have called the chimera until she just pronounced it correctly. Chimera, eh? Yes. <laughs> Live and learn. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out from our viewership. Yes. Well, it's so awesome to have you on and get to share and look at all of this different work and hear about the process and the transformation. Um, I'm really looking forward for people to be able to get to see this as well as check out the Dancer Project. There's some unbelievable stuff on our Instagram. Um, Josh Hart, as always behind the camera doing great work you can find us at clarioncontentmedia.com trying to cover the stories of durham we curate your city and we're happy to do it thanks so much